This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video over on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2. I'm playing with a pre-released deck at this point. I haven't done this in a long time. Uh, I like playing with uh, stuff as it comes out, uh, but I definitely like exploring newer things as well. Uh, so I'm playing with Jax Knights. Uh, this is a very interesting deck. I wanted to play with this specifically because I really like the like the design of all of the cards. Like the entire archetype itself um, just lends itself really like well to any sort of design element because it's uh, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting designed archetype. Like it's like the Amorphage archetype, but like designed well. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, but so I'm gonna activate this. I'm gonna discard. I just kind of want to discard the other cards by the World Legacy, honestly, um, because I can move this and move this. But I also, uh, yeah, that's not the Reborn card. So yeah, we'll just discard this. Um, that's Jack's Knight of the Blue Sky. That's actually really good. That's very good. Hmm. All right. So I'm gonna special summon this Grinder Golem. I'm gonna give myself token here and token here. I'm gonna give my opponent the grinder golem. Uh, yeah, grinder golem. Um, let's see, an opponent's cards in the same column. Well, I will be able to utilize that to a certain aspect and certain degree. So, I mean, hey, it's possible. But so I can summon this. I can set this here. I can then summon the Jack's Knight of the Blue Sky here. Which will then allow me to search for this, for Jack's Knight of Purple Dusk, to start my uh, search engine going. And then I can link into Link Spider over here. I can link into Link Karibo or another Link Spider. Uh, but Link Karibo is recyclable, recyclable from uh, Grave, so it doesn't really matter. And then I can make a Heshiki, whatever, a Kashik Magician, uh, with these two in this zone, bouncing both the Grinder Golem and the Blue Sky. And so now I can Special Summon the Grinder Golem again, but this time I can do it, uh, this time I can do it over here. Um, and so what that will allow is that will allow for... This has to pop a card in the same column, right? Yeah, same column as this card. All right, so now what I get to do is I get to go into the Link Karibo from Grave, tributing this Grinder Golem opens this deck up uh, really, really a lot. So Link Karibo here. Um, what I get to do is I get to Special Summon... The, I'm going to make a Proxy Dragon. I'm going to make it here, but first I'm going to Special Summon this here. I'm going to activate its effect, banishing, uh, to search for just another card to throw into the graveyard, uh, just to get names in. Um, but so I'll get Flickering Flame, because it's like the worst one. Uh, so I'll just get it into the graveyard, honestly. Because I'm going to make Proxy Dragon with my Link Karibo and with this. I'm going to make those under here. Or I could just go ahead and make these all into firewall. Honestly, I can make these three into fire or these yeah these three into firewall, uh, which would then allow me to summon uh, a dude, then link away with it if I wanted to. But it's not really going to be the major case that I'm going to be doing. But I want a monster in grave to be able to pop the grinder golem. Uh, so that's what's going to happen here. Because I can actually summon firewall over here. Uh, which means that I'd be able to uh, special this out of hand and then not have to worry about moving it. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, let's see. I can go special this in... No, I don't want to special it. I lied. I lied, please! Uh, well, no, yes, this is fine. Um, because I just make Proxy Dragon and I summon, the, uh, I summon this because of the firewall effect. Yeah, okay, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, it's quite weird um, that this effect will activate summoning the uh, the Jack Knight of the blue, of the Azure Blue. This one, 
Uh, so I'll summon it up here. It doesn't really matter where it goes because it can be uh, moved around. Um, and I can only tribute a level 1 monster to summon it that way once. And so I'm just going to leave this grinder golem token. Apparently, yeah, that's going to be how this goes. I could tribute summon this. <laughs> um, it's, it's a possibility. Not good, but it's a possibility. Now, what's this card? My opponent, I just, I, I, I've been doing all of this nonsense and my opponent set a card and passed. Ah, Whitestone of Ancients. So you're playing Brick Eyes. I see. I like it. I like it a lot. Brick Eyes Pendulum Dragons. Uh, but that goes for that. As far as damage goes, I can attack. And, uh, and so this is the one that negates spell effects. Which is actually something that could be super important to me. Not even gonna lie. Uh, it's something that could be really important. I'm not even gonna bother attacking with that token. Uh, let's see, is this... The, the Link Karibo Grave effect is the once per turn one, right? Yeah, you can only use this effect of Link Karibo once per turn. So, um, I'm just going to... I really don't want to leave this grinder token here. But at the same time... I see no better use for it, but I'm going to activate this. I'm going to move this one here, just to free up this zone under the firewall, and then I'm going to link into another Link Karibo, uh, just because basically the, these things going to Graveyard is irrelevant. They basically go back into your extra deck because you can summon them from Grave at least once a turn. So that, that turn ended up being pretty alright. Uh, he's going to summon Dragon Spirit of White and banish my uh, trap, which is going to be a little irritating. Um, but, I mean, hey, whatever. Whatever, man. He gets to activate his spells now freely, so that is a bit of a problem. And I have given him an extra uh, zone to summon from the extra deck into. Yeah, see, if this, if he hadn't summoned Dragon Spirit of White, then I would have been able to just chain this, moving it over here, negating his trade-in, and then everything would have been fine with the world. Um... There needs to kind of be a way to search these cards, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad they're not searchable. Uh, but the spell and two traps are definitely what make this deck, like, really good. Like, the thing is, like, the deck stands on its own as its own engine, um, with, like, all of the effects of the dudes that you're summoning. But then, like, on top of that... Really? Oh, it's main decking sphere mode. Alright. Okay, cool. Uh, that doesn't really do anything for you other than give you something that you can just easily kill, but still, man, who the fuck mains raw sphere mode? Alright, so Return of the Dragon Lords, yeah, to bring back your Dragon Spirit of White, you can now banish my field spell. My dude, my, uh, my dude that searches is coming back next turn, so I'll be able to get that, at least. Um, but yeah, like, the Jack's Knight archetype is will really well-rounded in terms of design. It may not be the best in terms of, like, a deck, but it's, like, very well designed, and I like that. I appreciate that. Um, but so, okay. Lancelot. He made this. Alright. Well, um, is he gonna, this is an attack directly, right? He's not even gonna attack the sphere mode? Boy, if I main deck the Winged Dragon of Ra, you'd get so punished right now. In fact, I kind of want to cheesily put a, uh, Winged Dragon of Ra into my, uh, extra deck, or into my side deck, just to, uh, just to be able to go, ha. Um, so the people that, like, I get side that in against and do that, just, you know, cheeky. Most of the time I don't use my full 15 card extra deck anyway, so seems pretty alright. Oh, he's getting rid of this. How nice, how kind. Into Pain Gainer. Alright, so this is the one that burns for, uh, spells, right? Yeah, spell or traps, but that doesn't matter. He's probably just going straight into 7 sins. Alright. So that's 7 sins. I need to draw into... A settable, which that is not a settable. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh no. Um, and there's no there's no card that I can search with this that's gonna be settable. That's ah, irritating. That's so irritating. I just lose this one to a sphere mode of all things. To a sphere mode of all things. Alright, well, I'm going to add this, and I'm going to change this thing's position to defense position. Well, it goes back to his board, right? Um, yeah, during the end phase of the next turn, shift control. 
So I'm going to have to set this just so that I don't like instant die. I'm still pretty bad off, but um, still very bad off in fact. I need to draw instant fusion or settable. Instant fusion would be great because I can instant fusion and a thousand eyes restrict. Take this, ha <laughs> ha! Uh, but now I just lose. I think I just lose this turn now. If he's resolving Melody of Awakening Dragon, I'm not sure that there's any way that I survive this game, which is a no bueno for me. Because uh, let's see, alternative comes down, it pops this, this swings for 4K. And it all comes down to whether or not he has another extender or not, to whether or not I survive this or not. Nah. Because if he has another extender, I, I don't think he has another extender, because if he did, he would have played it last turn, I'd imagine. Uh, because there's no reason to hold those cards when you can really just do things. Um, okay, so this synchroing away is... Well, no, he can't synchro away because he's got the seven sins here. Alright. Let's see, so desires... He's just drawing cards. Does he get to an extender? He has to get to a Return of the Dragon Lords or a Silver's Cry. Um, those are the cards he has to get to in order to win this turn. Does he have it? Trade in. He's just gonna keep drawing cards. But the thing is, he might have banished them off of these uh, off of these cards here. Uh, that's the thing. Is that he easily? Oh, that's another Melody of Awakening Dragon. That is not an extender. And he only searched one. Did he only search one? He only searched one. Okay, so after all that digging, he didn't get to an extender. So I've got a chance to, I've got a chance to get back in this game. A very slim chance, but a chance nonetheless. I have to draw a settable. Um, and if that settable is instant fusion, then that's very good for me. Uh, because I'll set the instant fusion. I'll summon my dude from hand. That's a good settable. Um, that's a very good settable, in fact. Uh, so what I'll summon is I'll summon this over here, where it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, and then I'm going to, I can set this card, I can summon the Azure Blue. I can use this to search for the red dude. Um, yeah, okay. So this is what's going to have to happen, is that I'm going to have to summon all of these in defense position. Uh, this is basically like a my stroke. Uh, but this banishes special summon monsters. That's gonna be such a kick in my ass. Um, well, no, I can make this guy. I can make the the big Link Three. So yes, okay, this is how this works. I'm gonna set this. I'm going to special this, special this, um, which I can then use. This is actually not good. Um, well, this can prevent his alternative from activating, and this can prevent this from activating. Yeah, okay, this is fine. This is a lot finer than I than I thought it was. Um, so we'll just we'll go with this. I'm gonna special summon this in defense position. I'm gonna special summon everything in defense position that I'm doing. Um, in fact, I'm going to use this i'm gonna activate this going over here um moving this move this here i'm going to special the thing well, i'm gonna activate this now this is gonna get banished um that's that that was the the most wasted ghost ogre um and I'm gonna special this here. Uh, I can use it to. I can use this to bring back a card from grave. So that's not a huge issue. Uh, but so I can do this. I'm banishing. Uh, I've got the blue in grave, so that's actually super important. Um, banish this one to uh, destroy that, and then. I can just change this card's position to defense position, and then I can get a search next turn with it. So that's doable. Um, this is still such an odd position to be in. Um, so I'll end my turn here. And so basically, here's what's gonna happen: is that like I'm gonna have to keep this on the board, 
uh, just to dodge effects since he's already established that he plays fucking Ghost Ogre. Um, so he's doing this. Alright, cool. And I'm gonna chain this to bring back the blue from Grave. I'm gonna bring it back in front of this Seven Sins. And that prevents it from, uh, that negates its effect and destroys it. Or it doesn't destroy it, it negates its effect, it prevents it from resolving. And so then if he uses alternative white dragon's effect, I'll use blue. And I'll use blue to try and change the position of Lotus um, over to, uh, to that. Um, well, it depends. It depends on where he summons this new alternative dragon. Um, that's that's the biggest factor here. It's where he summons his new alternative. If he summons it in any of these zones just carelessly, then we got him. Boy, we got him! Oh, shit! All right. So what we're going to do is that he's going to activate these, and he's going to activate them in the wrong order. I can guarantee you this is going to be how this goes. Um, he's going to... Well, it doesn't really matter if they're the wrong order, but what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to use the Azure Blue to move this card, to attempt to move the uh, the Purple Dusk over to this zone when he uses the alternative dragon effects to pop. Which one is he using? That one? That one gets auto-negated. So I'm not even going to mess with any chains here. Uh, and then, so, the, the reason why I'm going to use Azure Blue to move the Purple Dusk is that if he has a Ghost Ogre again for the, to try and Ghost Ogre this, I'm going to use Purple Dusk to banish it, and then the Purple Dusk will still end up in this, uh, in this zone. Um, the problem is that I'm still dealing with the fact that he can attack me with three monsters. <laughs> that's still the thing that's the problem. After all of this, after all of is said and done, the the problem is still that now he has three monsters on the field. Um, so for all of my kooky shit, uh, it's still it's still a problem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's he's playing beater of the deck. Um, well, actually, no, this is good because this only, only this one can uh, this one can't attack. Uh, so yeah, I like this. I like this infinitely better than I did about 10 seconds ago. Because this one can't attack even though its effect was negated. And so then I'll just banish this searcher card at the end of the turn. And then it'll come back and then I'll be able to search another card. Uh, main phase 2. Um, yes. We'll get rid of this now. Uh, and I'm going to search for... I think I search for another red guy, um, because I can get another blue guy next turn by banishing this as well. So, uh, depend again. I've I've got to draw cards. I've got to draw good cards. That's what we, that's what we've got to do. That is what we have to do. And now this this seven sins is still here and it's still protected by thing. He still protect. Um, fuck. This has been a long ass game too. So upset! It's taking so long for no reason. Um, but I guess that's what I should expect with this Jax Knight's bullshit? I don't know. I don't know if that's what I should expect or not. Uh, but my opponent can't overlay with these because he's got an exceed right here. The only thing you can do is like make a decode talker, but that'd be a huge like waste of resource value. Um, I can summon the red guy and that'll at least get the return of the Dragon Lords out of grave so I can start killing his shit. Um, like that's 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 something that we can we can be mindful of. He sent that to grave. What does that what did that do? Uh, it summons this. Oh, that sucks. That is such a shitty card. Guard, fuck you. Oh, I'm so upset. All right, well. Um, well, we'll just do it like this then, I guess. Um, so this can come here. And this can come out here. Uh, whoa, wait, what? How did two of them get banished? Oh, this was from the last turn! <laughs> ah! Alright! Okay, this works a lot better than I had ever, ever expected it to. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate this. I'm gonna move it over here, right? Activate this. And move it to this zone. Um, just so that I clear up space, and then I'm gonna set this 
I set this here. Um, and then I'm going to special summon this into this zone. And I've got enough fuel in the grave to make that Return of the Dragon Lords not matter because this is not a once per turn effect. So banish. It'll attempt to destroy. And then we'll just we'll do it again. And then that'll be fine. I can make my Link Monster here. I could summon this from my hand. Um, and then I can do my shit. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and yeah, this isn't a once per turn effect because it's inherently once per turn because there would normally not be two monsters in that column. But it's completely not restricted. So we'll go with that. This video is so long. This duel is so long. This is going to be a single game video. I'm not dealing with this bullshit. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this bullshit. My opponent's taking so long to think about whether or not you're going to protect with Return of the Dragon Lords. Come on, big boy. You either do it or you let it die. It's so simple. You say yes or nah. Fuck me. This is why I don't like to do this late at night. Um. So are you letting it die? Question mark? Um. He is letting it die. Alright. So. Uh, the thing is, I need access to, like, the field spell. That's for, that's the, that's the realest truth that I could ever say. I need access to the field spell, like, now, preferably. <laughs> uh, preferably now, in fact. Uh, but so I can make access into this. Which, uh, this card can't be destroyed by card effects and your opponent can't target it with card effects. But that doesn't stop this. Um... That is the biggest issue, is that I need to get rid of this. And does this summon... This summons from your deck, right? From your deck in defense position. Um, and this doesn't target and this doesn't destroy. <sighs> All it needs is two materials on it as well. This is such a bad time for me. Uh, I can special this, I can special these... Yeah, I don't think I win this game. I'm pretty sure I don't win this game. Out of principle. However, wait! Wait, I do! If there are no other cards in the same column as this card, this card can attack directly! I win! My opponent's at 2800! I just send this card to the graveyard to summon a dumbass uh, Jack Knight over here in any of these columns, and it attacks directly. Yeah! Alright! That was actually just super simple. I didn't know my opponent was as low as he was. How is my opponent that low? I don't remember even touching him as far as damage is concerned. I literally don't remember touching him for damage. Oh wait, turn one! When he just set this, the white stone and then passed. And I could have probably killed him, but didn't. That's when that happened. Alright. Okay. See, it's like... What time is it? <laughs> it's 6 in the morning. Um, and I have not just woken up. I've been up the entire day. See, I had this thing where I uh, I was waiting for uh, images to finish downloading and stuff for Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2 to update. Because they have to do all that shit manually. And then I lost track of time working on uh, installing a new motor... In one of my uh, in one of my bigger models that I literally do just having have sit on like sat on my desk over here, um, and before I realized it, about six about six hours had gone by. <laughs> well, not quite six, but like a good solid four hours had gone by from the point at which I tore this model apart, you know, took the shell off of it, got down into the nitty gritty, and started you know taking out wiring, replacing the motor, the can motor, with a more powerful motor than what was already in it. And then getting all the wiring back to the motor and back to the terminal strips in the uh, in the uh, uh, model to where it doesn't uh, in, uh, doesn't uh, impede the shell from dropping onto it, and then it just ended up being like 4:30 in the morning, <laughs> and then I had to figure out what to film, so I had to learn the Jack Knight's cards like by heart and do all this. So it's been a it's been a struggle. But anyway, this video is kind of long, and it's unfortunately going to be a single game video, but. Hopefully you guys still enjoy it nonetheless. I do plan on playing more with Jack's Nice in the future, so definitely let me know what your thoughts are 
on this archetype in the uh, comment section down below. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been doing and want to support my ability to continue making videos, support my ability to improve quality content and things like that, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as it gets you entry into monthly giveaways for Yu-Gi-Oh! products, as well as entry to my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh! and other fandoms. So, if you're interested in any of that, then definitely go check out the reward tiers on the Patreon that is linked in the description, and you'd have my thanks in advance for any support that you'd like, uh, that you'd like to give, essentially, because <laughs> YouTube is being weird with, uh, with AdSense and all that sort of stuff, so, things to consider. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Sorry this one was as long as it was for just a single game. But now that the video is over, I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a ton. You help out much more than you guys know, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. You guys are awesome, and thank you so much for the support.